Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. We are going to get ready to work on lesson 16. So we're going to be jumping into that mouse inputs. I'm going to go ahead and turn the video off so you can see my entire screen. But again, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you later. All right, so let's get started. Again, we're on lesson 16, which is that mouse input. And as you probably can guess, we're going to be working with the mouse today. Before we begin, I want you to jump in and answer this question real quick. Now, you have this in Canvas if you're in class. So it says a 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Three things. What are three different things that you've been able to do with conditionals? Now remember, those conditionals are those if statements. So three things that you've been able to do. You guys can probably think of many more, but just three of them. And then two, what are two big things that everyone should remember when using conditionals? So what are those two things that we should remember when using conditionals? And that final one, What's one thing you still want to learn how to program? So what is it you want to learn? Let me know through that question. Go ahead and pause this video and get those written down and then resume your video. So go ahead, pause now. All right, I hope you came up with some good ideas. You know, one thing that I really liked about with those conditionals is being able to use my key down where I could program the up, down, left, right arrows. That was one thing I really liked. I also liked how we could use that if statement to make some of our animations change. Kind of like when we had that rocket ship um, blasting off and then they could start to dance. Things that those are a couple that I really liked. One thing that I think we should remember when using conditionals is that we need to make sure that we are using the X when we want things to go horizontal and that we're using the Y when we want things to go vertically, so up and down. So those are a couple of things that I thought of. Hope you guys came up with a whole bunch of other ideas. All right, so our question of the day, what you should be thinking about as you work through this is what are more ways that the computer can react to your user input? So we've got those keys and things, but there's many more ways we can program our computer to interact. So think about that as we're working through Lesson 16. Our objectives for today, okay? You're going to be able to use an if-else Oh, a little bit different there, right? We had if statements, but now we're going to do an if else statement to control the flow of a program. And then we're going to also respond to a variety of types of user inputs. All right, let's keep moving. So our activity, I'm going to stop this real quick. We're going to jump into code.org. Okay, we're going to be in lesson 16, and we're going to just start at that first level. So I'm going to jump out of the slideshow, jump over to lesson 16. I'm already in here. It says read through the following program, play, paying special attention to the if else statement. Looky here, right there. In line 10, after discussing the following question with a partner, write down your prediction in the little spot down below. So when you see this down here, there is a little box for you to put this information in. So let's read the code together real quick. We have a sprite right here, right? A variable balloon, and it is creating a sprite at 200, 200. So I know that's gonna be in the center of the screen. Our balloon, its name is balloon, is going to look like, when we say set animation, this is similar to look like a balloon. And I can see that. No, I can't because I can't look at my code right now or my um, design up there. And then our balloon dot scale equals 0.6. So it's about half the size it normally would be. 
And then we go into our draw function. Remember, it's going to create this, and then it's not going to draw to the screen until we get way down here. So we're in the draw function. We've got a background that is white. We've got a key down. That's the space bar. So I know I'm going to be interacting with the space bar. And then I can see we got that balloon. We're playing with that sprite scale, and it's getting bigger. Else, it's getting smaller. So I can see that over here. So something with that balloon getting bigger and something with it getting smaller. Now, I'm not going to do this. You go ahead and answer that prompt up there. Make that prediction what's going to happen. And go ahead and watch that interaction. I think you're going to enjoy it. Remember, push the space bar down and let off of it. See what happens. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that balloon. I sure did. <clears throat> Next, I want you guys to jump in and just watch this. Pause this video, jump in and watch the video from code.org. They're going to talk a little bit more about this if-else statement. So we've done if statements, but now we've got this else. And here's an example of our alarm clock. During the week, we get up at one time, but hey, Saturday, Sunday, we get to sleep in. All right, so question. I want you to be able to answer this after you're done watching it. What's an example of when you would need an if else statement? So keep that in mind. That'll help you out the rest of this as you figure out when we need these if else statements. All right, I'm going to jump over to lesson three. All right, sorry, excuse me, level three. All right, so here we go. We got our gears. It says these gears already spin one direction when you push the space bar. Now you'll want them to spin the other direction when the space bar isn't pressed. So let's look at it. There they go. Oh, I've already done this. Look at it. We go in that direction. I push the space bar. Whoo, there they go the other way. I'm going to start over. Okay. So it says, do this. Make the gears spin the opposite way. Um, when the space bar is not pressed. So I'm going to go to version history. I'm going to start over. All right, here we go. I can see right here, hit run. We got our gears being drawn up here. So we created our, our sprites. Down here, we created our background and reset run. I push space bar, they move. Now here's the thing. All I got to do is add an else, because if I push the space bar, I want this, else I want them to do something else, right? And else means they want to go the opposite way. So this is the way they're going right now. I'm going to take these, watch. I'm just going to copy this, control C. I'm going to drop down in here to that little black line. I'm going to hit control V and they're there. Now, here's the problem. I hit reset run right now. I push space bar. There is no difference because it's going the exact same way. So I'm going to go into show text and I'm going to make these the opposite. So that one was subtraction. So I want it to go the other way. So I'm going to addition. I'm going to do subtraction and I'm going to do subtraction. Let's see what happens. Reset run. There it's spinning. I push the space bar, Ooh, going the other way, let go of the space bar, press the space bar. Pretty cool. I'll go back to showing those blocks. All right, moving on to level four. Whew, we're flying through this, guys. It says control the gears. Here is the same program, but with one small difference. Uh-oh, let's see what's going on. There they are. Oh, my spacebar is not doing anything. It says read the program carefully, especially line 13, to figure out how to control the, the gears. Run the program and test whether you were correct. 13, huh? If, oh, what does that say? That doesn't say spacebar. That says mouse. I'm going to try that. I'm going to press. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 
if you press the left mouse button, whoo, look at that. Yeah, it's working. Ah, I like that. Mouse down. So you still have to do some. I've already got it done, right? But it says run the program and test whether you are correct. Make the gears spin the opposite way when there is no user input. So same thing we did last time. You're just redoing it, but this time it's being controlled by the mouse. All right, let's see what it says. Mouse clicks. Here's a program that drops a balloon down the screen. Make the balloon go up and down according to whether the user is pressing the mouse. Add code that checks whether the mouse is being pressed. Move the balloon up if the mouse is down. Otherwise, move it down. All right, so I'm going to hit run. There comes our balloon. There it goes up. There it comes down. Up, down, up, down. All right. Here we go. Let's code this together, shall we? I'm going to start all over because mine is already done. Kind of nice to see what we're supposed to do before, I think, um, just to give us an idea. So here we go. I'm going to hit run. Our mouse is just dropping, right? So there it is. It says add a control. And we're going to need an else in here, right? Because we want it to do something else if we're not pressing the mouse. So I know if I put that in the else, because that's what I want it to do if I'm not controlling it. So run. It's not going to do anything because I've got an error. I haven't put anything in my control. Well, we know that is when mouse down, right? And it's left button automatically. Reset run. So it's going to do something. It's going to fall. But if I press the mouse, nothing happens. Well, it does. It stops. But it's not going back up. So let's put the code in there. Remember, we just want it to do the opposite thing. So I'm going to go into sprites, sprite.x, right? But its name isn't sprite. It's called balloon. There we go. So balloon.y equals, I can see this was addition, so I know I want the opposite, subtraction. Now, I'm going to just type this in. I don't have to go back. Balloon.y. Now, I had to type that dot .y in. Remember, I could go and grab Sprite and drag it out, but I can also type it in there. And I'm going to do one. Reset run. It's coming down. What did I do? Oh, look at that. I missed an O in the first one. There we go. Now I press it. Up it goes. Down it comes. Up it goes. Down it comes. So, we got that one working. Remember debugging. It happens to everybody. So just go through, think about what we wanted to happen and what did happen. I pressed the balloon. I thought it was going to go up, but it didn't happen. So I knew there was a problem with that line. And the computer gave us a little bit of a clue with that red square, right? So don't get frustrated when you see those bugs. Just squash them. Okay, level six, here we go. Maybe, if my computer will get going. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Oh, we got the blender. We're gonna go back and forth and the mixer. So it says, this program uses an if block to shake the blender when the mouse is on the left side of the screen. Run the program to see how it works. Add an else to make the mixer shake when the mouse is on the other side of the screen. Let's watch. Run. Going. Back and forth. Cool. I kind of like that. All right. So I'm going to start over. I don't know why I went to. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to go back to blocks for you guys. Okay. Remember, you can always do text mode if you prefer it. And it is really good um, for you to know that. Okay, so now my blender, but my mixer does not move. Well, I know 
If I'm here, I want it to do that. Else, I want that to happen. So I'm going to add my else. It's just that little plus sign there. Now, here's the thing. I don't want my blender to do something else. I want my mixer to do something. So I can see I've got these. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put those in. I'm going to grab a sprite.x and a sprite.y. Now remember, in code.org, it automatically puts that purple around our properties when we drag them in there, okay? So you don't have to grab this. Remember, we don't create a new variable. We're just working with the property. So here we go. It's not called sprite. It's called mixer. So here's the thing. We're just using random numbers to make these shake. So I'm going to put in a random number. Now, I want you guys to watch what happens. Don't copy this right now. Just watch. I'm grabbing two because I've got my X and I've got my Y. And I'm going to use the same numbers they did. Now, this is not going to be correct. And I'll show you why. So they did 95, 105. And then they did 295, 305. 295. 5. Reset, run. Looks good right now until, ah, uh, that wasn't what I wanted to happen. So remember, these are a range for our X position and a range for our Y position. So that put our mixer exactly in the same place as our blender. We want our mixer back where it was. So I got to go up, and I can see it was at 300, 300. Now, if I look, they're doing 95 to 105, okay? So I'm going to do kind of the same thing with my 300. Because if we look, they're doing 100. So they're going five below and five above. Well, we're doing 300 with our mixer. So I'm going to go five below and five above. And I'm going to hit reset run. Now, I hit it. Ooh, not bad. Is that because I'm in the right place? 300? Oh, look at that. Yep. So it keeps it where it should be. Nice. All right, so here's the thing. I've walked you through a couple, okay? Now you're going to do a couple on your own. We got the ladybug on a walk, okay? I'm going to go show text just so. So my ladybug, as I move to different sides of the screen, up and down, forward, backward. Forward, backward. Ah, oh, look at that. So here's what it says. It says the ladybug should only move when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen. You're going to use a conditional to make sure that the ladybug only moves when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen. Use an if block, okay, to make it move. And I added another section. I did an else. If I went high, she moves backwards. Okay, and go back in. Same kind of thing. Now we're doing left and right. Okay. So here's our ghost. Oops, you can't see it. There it is. Let's see it run. Oh, look. I haven't programmed this one yet. We got to do some programming on here. So you're going to be adding an if statement. To make it move. And you might need an else in there as well. You'll have to decide. And then your assessment level. If you're my class, this is the level that you will be turning into me, okay? So on this one it says, this program should only shake the creature when the mouse when the mouse is pressed and only show directions when the mouse is not pressed. Ooh. So this one, I can see the word else, right? So I will give you a hint. You're going to do an if 
else. These, these instructions, if I push the mouse, he should start shaking and those should disappear. And then when I quit pressing the mouse, he should stop shaking and those should reappear. And then the challenge. This one's got some really cool challenges. We've got these spirals, okay? They're gonna grow and get smaller. Kind of a fun thing to do. Here, we get to make the bee follow our mouse. And this one, it follows our mouse, but it's not exactly right on our mouse the entire time. So I would encourage you guys to do these first three at least, okay? And then shake the salt, um, make the salt shaker shake as you move the mouse. So if I move the mouse back and forth, that shaker is going to start to shake. So these are some really fun, especially they start to get us ready for building our game. So you might jump in and do these lessons as well. Happy coding. Hope you enjoyed today.